femininity mugs available now. Femininity. Oh, Lord, so you're going to have run and tell that Brooke comfort you in a moment of crisis? Tierra, you're stupider than I thought. So she's trying to convince herself, because she sure as shit ain't convincing us, that Akbar didn't leak those cornstarch photos. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How did your ex leak a current sex tape? Or do you just have so many photos out there like that, and anybody could leak a picture of them leaking on you? <laughs> now, Brooke, you are a two-faced piece of shit. Because you're going to say in her face, it's looking like a publicity stunt. Like, I'm not saying it, but this is word on the curb. In the confessional, we find out you the curb. The tired ass curb. And so Tierra going to get her money up with the lawsuit. So Tierra going to say, look, Nikki and Paris just aren't messy enough to show up at a press conference. Will you pull this stunt with me? Brooke going to show up. She ain't got shit else to do. I mean, look at these two singers. Instead of getting together to do a duet, they're joining forces in jizz. I can't. So we've got our favorite Gila monster and Amber Diamond, who I, I always forget her presence. Oh, this is the 20 bands heifer. So Amber gonna say, work with my ain't shit mama. I don't know, I don't know. I think Sean and the Gila monster gonna bump heads. Oh God, Brooke. You got on GarageBand and call yourself putting out an album. Honey, it's been 10 years since you've put out music because we don't fuck with it. And we don't fuck with you. I'm not even going to review Bridget Kelly's album. You know why? I don't know what planet she's from. I don't know what her alien love call will do to my brain cells. I'd be cautious if I were you. I certainly didn't hear an impressive vocal. Stuck in the gray. Sounds like a goat's brain. So now we are joined by Monice, the neglectful. But what is going on with Brooke's hair? Oh, it looks a, a fooly fool. A fooly fooly fool. A 499 fool. 499 a pack. 499 a pack. It looks like it smells acrylic. Yeah, I don't think Tierra want to see you at the press conference, Monice, the neglectful. All right, let's shoehorn Donatella in. Oh, so they'll buy your shit in the UK, but you ain't selling on this side of the sea. Well, huh, you're lucky somebody will play your sorry little albums and take pity on you. Now you, you've made your career off of payola and sympathy. Please, Brooke is excited for lunch because that's her first time leaving the country. Oh, Lord. Why you gotta be a whiny sissy? Be an interesting sissy, a funny sissy. Look, I can't be my real self. Nobody wants to hear my girl. So now you mad LaBrittany got the gig you wanted. Well, LaBrittany ain't gonna depress the place with that rap. That's why they hired her. Getting back in the studio. Monice, when were you ever in the studio successfully? You don't have, do you have music? I'ma check Spotify right now. Chai, I tell you, backpedaling pussy pop will be on iTunes before you come out with an album. Okay, the heifer got two sad little songs. She's giving us Janet Jackson whisper. Ain't nothing special about her voice. Oh, God. You really bragging about fucking Monice Rockstar? Why are you hiding your inner sissy? This is more unbelievable than Queen Latifah and Scooter. Did y'all see that IHOP pancake commercial with the screaming pumpkins. That was cute. All right, now we at the press conference. Heffa Scott Young knows no bounds. Mona, you gotta get better actresses if you're gonna pull these kind of stunts. This is so unbelievable. It's even more unbelievable than the first time we saw it. Nikki look extra fake today with that storm hair. Now, I want to know if they going to cover the real gag that Tierra tried to sue 50 Cent and her case got thrown out. Now he's suing her for legal fees. Are they going to cover that gag? I'm sorry. This is a stunt. S-T-U-N-T. -T, stunt. Yeah, that's it. Stunt. I didn't want a B-I-T-C-H moment. Or B-I-T-C. You know how she said it. Okay, Michelle, you need to take that My Little Ponytail off your head. Oh, ho, ho. 
Monice the Neglectful shows up anyway. I thought she'd have enough sense to stay home, but she's never going to miss camera time. What was I thinking? Oh, Lord, Brooke, you got on two whole ass wigs. I know that's hurting your neck. Tierra, your phone's been off the hook and the blogs have been on fire, but you haven't made a penny. Not a penny. So Tierra says, well, you know what? I was there for Nikki with her sex tape, but she can't be there for me with mine. Y'all are some real skeezers. Brooke Valentine, how the hell can you help anybody in the music world? I didn't know you retired after successful tours and album sales. I thought you were forced out during the digital download era that truly separated the stars from the asteroids. And now we got K. Michelle, and since she doesn't have anything going on since she's been banned from, from radio, she gonna get into Tierra's business. I hope they paying Tierra a lot this season, cause this effort carrying the show. She got K. Michelle plotline, Paris plotline, and Nikki plotline, and now Moniece plotline. Tierra's business is keeping everyone afloat. So Akbar said, look, I, I didn't put it out, but maybe one of my huzzies did. Now, Akbar real thirsty. He tried to get K. Michelle in the harem. All right, Sean and Amber are making up. Oh, Apple got to do a month in jail for a violele. And she like, just, just a month. Just a I will say this. Sean actually seems like she's about her business. I hope she can do something with the Gila monster. I like her. Harris finally got her fucking hair together. That Aaliyah look is working for her. So Tierra and Monice the Neglectful pull up on Nikki. You know, I, I think Nikki one did have to deal with her, with her pappy in the piddle. But I also think Nikki is sick of Tierra always being down, always having an issue. Your life is one dumpster fire after a fucking nother. You finally get on this show and can't do shit with it. Now, Nikki, I, I don't know why you think you're going to get sued. That don't make a no sense. All right, so we upset, but we hashing it out. I can't believe Monice the Neglectful was a voice of reason. Nikki Maduris is a plastic liar from the pit of hell. We saw you watching that farce of a press conference with Paris at your house. Y'all was eating popcorn, but you was with your dad at the hospital. I bet you your dad isn't in the hospital. I bet you he ain't got shit but gas. Okay, I'm watching the Sissy versus LaBritney on Fast Forward because you didn't want the job, sir. Lord, now she yelling and screaming. I, I don't give a fuck. Not about them. Oh, we've got the neglectful in the booth. Brooke, you acted like somebody checking for your vocals. Girl, you couldn't even sell backpedal and pussy pop. Oh, yeah, Monice, you do sound a stone fool, though. Hey, days work. Wig, wig, every man wants a woman. That tease. Oh, Brooke, you didn't come to support shit but your tits. I came to be supportive, but it's not working out. Let's see how many albums you can sell. Put out a single, heifer. Put out a single. Oh, God. Monice the Neglectful is giving us panic attack tease. This is her trying to get off the show. Oh, she just fell out. So you fell out, but your hat didn't fall? You said I fell out on the floor, but your hat stayed on your head doing all that falling out. Yeah, you fell out all right. Oh, God. This is worse than uh, Danielle getting too high in Jamaica. <laughs> oh, God. And so Monique having a fake fallout and Rockstar and Brooke ain't buying it. They said, please, you heard up an octave and that's why you fell out. Oh, you're going to catch hell at the reunion for this, Monice. So Monice go on to the hospital. I guess production was going to pay for it. <laughs> I was with Rockstar. I thought she was going to pop up and Brooke getting in the booth. And that's where the shit ends. So I'm going to see you soon. Okay, so the interview starts off very, very interesting. So Kat talks about his success with producing his own comedy specials. And he lets us know how Netflix works their deals. However many tickets you sold, you get a dollar per person. 
Monique sold 300,000 tickets. That's why she was offered $300,000. He sold 2.4 million tickets. He got $2.4 million. It, it makes sense. We're talking about a business and it's all about asses. Can you get asses in the seats? Eyeballs on the screen. And I think that he was very accurate when he said, Netflix doesn't have an opinion on stand-up comedy. They are a business. They, they just gonna go with who gonna get them the views, the click and the view. I know about it. He told Monique for free, take your ass to work and get your numbers up. Those are his words. I want your thoughts. I agree. If they're letting you know that's the formula, then yeah, just get your numbers up. Do another tour. So now Cat shades Gerard Carmichael having his Netflix special, but Netflix never releases their numbers, so we don't know if people watched or not. Then he gonna call Lil Rel ugly. I don't think Lil Rel is ugly. I actually think Lil Rel is cute. He's got bright eyes, beautiful skin, a great smile. I mean, Cat Williams, you don't fuck men, so maybe you shouldn't rate him. But uh, ain't nothing wrong with looking at Lil Rel. Ain't nothing wrong with looking at Lil Rel. Lil Rel cute. As for his critiques about Tiffany Haddish skipping over other women, that's the nature of celebrity. Everybody has their time. Some people are gonna go before you, then you might end up further along than them a couple years down the line. He said nobody knows a Tiffany Haddish joke. And that may be true because she really just exploded into the culture. She's only been like famous famous for what, like a year and a half, maybe two years. Girl's Trip ain't been out for that damn long. But everybody got their opinion. Do I think Tiffany Haddish is funny? She hasn't made me laugh yet, but, but if she makes other people laugh, I'm not going to shit on it. She clearly doing something right. And Wanda defends Tiffany. And I think this is when their discombobulele gets underway. She says, Tiffany is real. And then he said, oh, well, everybody got an auntie or somebody like that in their family. Kat, you are very similar to Tiffany Haddish with that around the way you know, raunchy uncle persona. So I don't think you should throw stones from your glass house. But I will say I watched three minutes of Tiffany's stand-up and none of the jokes really impressed me. I'll say that. But but I've, I've never seen her in anything. Didn't watch her Saturday Night Live. Haven't seen Girls Trip yet. So I'm going to reserve judgment at this time. I'm going to say I don't know her, but I wish her well. Oh, God, now he gonna say white people don't believe in ugly stars, please. What about Lena Dunham? What about Sarah Jessica Parker? What about Will Ferrell? What about Molly Shannon? What about Steve Buscemi? What about Jonah Hill? Uh-uh, uh-uh. Whiteys be fucking with the uggos. They be fucking with the uggos. Okay, now he says, oh, well, Tiffany didn't write Girls Trip. Just because you didn't write it don't mean you ain't funny. Hell, Paul Mooney wrote for Richard Pryor. It doesn't diminish and denounce Richard Pryor. Being a comedic actor is a talent, and it shouldn't be dismissed or poo-pooed. Because he said, oh, anybody could have done what Tiffany Haddish did with that role. No, no, that's a lie. That is a lie. What's for you is for you, and this was for her. And people are clearly salty about it. Now, you may have a friend that you feel deserves to be on. Well, put them on, but don't tear Tiffany down. That just makes you look bitter and petty and jealous. So Wanda and Kat are really getting into it over Tiffany. And this is when we get into the reads. Um, okay. Now, Kat, I, I don't know what fantasy world you live in, but how you look definitely affects the comedy, the jokes you can tell, and the jokes you can't. What hits and what doesn't. So no, looks affect things because we're human and we're visual. It affects shit for the white folk and it affects shit for the black folk. It is what it is. If you go over to an Asian country, it affect them too. If you go to Latin America, it affect them too. All over the world, people judge people by how they look. Film at a fucking leaven. It's not new news. And so Wanda asked Kat, what are some of the things you cook for your kids? And this is when it goes left. 
Kat says, well, as a father of seven with an unlimited food budget, as in, girl, I'm not telling you about my children. So, and I get that. He was like, I just told you there aren't pictures of them out there. Why are you asking me about the details of their diet? Kat, you could have said, hey, let's not talk about my kids. People would respect it and y'all could have moved on. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. But Wanda kept digging. She said, I want to know what they like. Oh, all right. You, you digging? You getting in there. You getting in there. And then Wanda does keep interrupting the answer. And Kat's right. Everybody can hear it. Just let him speak. But you trying to get some jokes in. You're trying to read and roast. And um, he really is not the one. And then he talks about her crayon-esque lipstick. It did have too much shimmer in it. It reminded me of the gold crayon in the Crayola box back in the 80s. Not the 90s, the 80s. And so after Kat gives us a dinner recipe and breaks down the cost at Publix, I've never been to a Publix, but I want to go. I hear the food is fabulous. He asked Wanda how many kids she got. And then he says Wanda cooked more in the be than in the latter years, so I guess he was alluding to a divorce. That I didn't get. That was odd. I, I think it was a divorce illusion. And so the guest comic asked Wanda, what's their favorite thing for you to cook? And I think the reason that Kat went in on her is because she didn't know what she cooked. She lied. She said, oh, broccoli. Now, you might be able to do a broccoli casserole or a good broccoli and cheese, but nobody's favorite meal, nobody's running to you saying, ooh, will you make me some broccoli? Now, baked chicken, I'll buy. I'll buy a good baked chicken, but not broccoli. Not broccoli. And everybody was laughing at her. Cat wasn't even laughing. I think Frank was laughing, the guest was laughing, the staff was laughing. Wanda, you have lost the room. And all Wanda can do is call him a hater and say shut up. I swear, when Cat Williams said, what I do with corn, I fell the fuck out. The fuck out. And then I get some Zatarans. They ain't expecting that. I mean, reading for blood, but keeping it light, keeping it breezy. It's like, okay... I'm making fun of what you said. I ain't never even tasted your cooking. Wanda said, I'm an excellent cook. And Kat said, yeah, you good at heating stuff up. Now, Wanda takes it to another level when she says, yeah, and you're good about telling us what's going on in jail. Get a little drunk and you land in jail. A little Dorothy's born act tea. And then he hit her with that, I'll be telling my story in an arena named Phillips and you will be at the Atlanta Comedy Club. Facts. This was that moment when you really see the difference between A-list and Z-list. Between local and worldwide. Oh, and then she called him crazy. And he got a little head bob with that. Yep. Yep. She, she pushed it. She pushed it. She tried it. And then she gonna insult his hair. Big mistake. Huge! Because that does look like a headphone wig. It, it looks like a winter cap. It looks like a wig that you would get on 125th for $29.99. Maybe $29.95. Cat spoke on it. And he spoke on it eloquently. And then we have another skirmish of words. When he tells her to come over and run one of her gnarled fingers through his 19 inches. She was like, no, but you can come over here. And he was like, no, no, that's not how that works. I.e. referencing, I am the star. You know, I ain't getting up. I am not at your beck and call. And that, I think, got Wanda even more in her feelings. Because you've been losing. You've been losing. Then she goes for his jacket. It's Versace. And... His clothes don't look old to me. It does look like a new collection. I don't know if it's summer 2019, but hell, with that kind of money, it probably is. Wanda, however, does look like she got that jury at Sitco. Piercing Pagoda. Ha! Ah! Where he said, I didn't have to open my jacket up to let you know it was Versace. We are on the radio. They can't see shit. Ooh. He's on it. He is aware of his surroundings and ready to read. Now, Kat, don't dislane Bryant. They got cute shit. 
Ooh, and she gonna say, get this inmate out of here. Mm, 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 mm. See, I see why Frank Ski didn't jump in. Right when you think it's over, she come back with another failed joke and he lands a winner. Then he talks about her cholesterol. She call him little mama. I wouldn't talk about anybody's femininity when you're giving femininity. I see why your success as a comedian has stalled at best. Now, child, cat, 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 saying prison and jail aren't the same may be true, but it's a weak read. <laughs> it's a weak read. There's a difference between murder and manslaughter. True, but we don't really give a fuck. But then he gets her with the ether. Only one of us has $12 worth of jewelry on. If you go to sit and purchase two packs of Newport 100s, you can get everything that Wanda has on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Cat Williams. Thank you. I'll be here all week. See you at the Phillips Arena. I mean, that, that was the sign-off. That was a sign-off joke. It was like when I asked Chris, did you buy Remy's album? I, I, and that's all the time we have for today. It was one of those. Just boom, show ends. She was never able to recover from that. And the shit went viral. It was all over Twitter and was the roast of the weekend. Apparently, Wanda didn't enjoy being a laughing stock. That's why you don't pick fights with people that can outjoke you. So now Frank and Wanda have a conversation about the shit. I ain't gonna listen to it. I listened to a snippet. And Wanda was talking about all these charitable works and how that never goes viral, but this goes viral. And the devil is attacking her because she, try she trying to help people at a homeless house. And I'm glad you're doing charity, but you started shit and Kat ended it. End of story. Stop trying to play the victim. I don't have time, energy, or effort to listen to her backpedaling, pussy popping, and general hypocrisy for 43 minutes and 10 seconds. I have better things to do with my time. Check out all the new colorways and new products at the Biffa Emporium. So as my mugs say, tell a kin, tell a friend, tell that heifer you hate to head over to the Biffa Emporium for a cute collection of hoodies and mugs. Link below.